This short video gives an overview of bund design. You may also wish to look at our introduction to bunds video. This video assumes that you need a bund in the first place. However, not all hazardous liquids necessarily need to be bunded. In the UK, quantities of less than 200 litres of oil do not need to be bunded. In Ireland, there is no general requirement to bund hazardous liquids unless specifically stated in the site licence or permit. However, best practice is to bund hazardous liquids unless a risk assessment shows that this is not necessary. The purpose of a bund is to provide a secondary containment should the primary containment fail. The first consideration when designing a bund is to decide what the capacity of the secondary containment should be. The general rule in the UK and Ireland is that the bund capacity should be 110% of the largest tank or 25% of the total tank capacity, whichever is the greater. This rule can cause some confusion, so we will explain this with some examples. If there is only one tank in a bund, the general rule simplifies to requiring the bund capacity to be 110% of the tank as this is clearly greater than 25%. For two, three or four tanks in a bund, the 110% rule still applies as this will always be greater than 25% of the total. For more than four tanks, 110% of the capacity of the largest tank needs to be found and then compared to 25% of the total tank capacity. Whichever quantity is the greatest is the required capacity of the bund. A note of caution where two or more tanks are interconnected. If one of the tanks fails, the contents of the other interconnected tanks may also empty. If this is the case, the interconnected tank should be treated as one large tank whose volume is the sum of the interconnected tanks. Using the 110% 25% rule, it follows that it would be more economic to place as many tanks as possible within the same bund, but this can only be done if the contents of the tanks do not react. Having established the required volume of the bund, we need to decide on the bund floor area. Space can be limited on many sites, so a smaller floor area as possible is generally required. The higher the bund walls, the smaller the floor area for the same bund capacity. But there is a limit to how high we can make the bund walls. For firefighting, ease of access and to allow natural ventilation, the walls should be no more than 1.5 metres high. There are some additional constraints. For example, there should be a minimum space between the bund wall and any tank to allow easy access and inspection. The general rule is that this minimum be 750 millimetres. If you do not have a large enough floor area for the bund, you may need to consider remote containment. Remote containment is simply some large sump or bund located at a more convenient place with a pipe leading from the bund to the remote containment. Where there is remote containment, the tanks will often have just a low wall around the perimeter. For drum storage areas, there may be a channel instead of a low wall. The channel then leads to a remote sump. The generic bund design is shown here. Note that all vents and outlet pipes should be within the bund. Ideally, the bund should be protected from rain. If not, the rainwater will need to be removed at regular intervals to ensure the bund has sufficient capacity. If the rainwater is contaminated with oil or chemicals, then proper disposal will be costly and roofing the bund may be more economic. Rainwater should always be tested before disposal. Note that only uncontaminated rainwater is allowed to enter surface water drains. On no account should rainwater pumps be controlled by a float switch or similar, as this may lead to the entire tank contents being pumped out if there is a leak. And gravity discharge of rainwater, e.g. by a drain valve, is not considered best practice. Pipes and cables that need to enter a bund should do so above the bond wall and not through the bond wall. Pipes passing through the wall are a common source of failure. Consideration should be given to jetting failure. This is where a jet of liquid from a hole in the tank may shoot out over the bond wall. It is recommended that an impermeable area outside the bund be of sufficient width to collect any such leak due to jetting. The usual material for bund construction is reinforced mass concrete, or sometimes reinforced masonry. Bunds constructed of unreinforced hollow core concrete blocks or breeze blocks are totally unsuitable. These have a very high failure rate when tested. 
An alternative is the sump pallet, manufactured from either plastic or steel. Or a bonded storage cabinet, sometimes referred to as a chem store unit. There are a number of design standards of reinforced mass concrete buns. Sierra 163 offers guidance and model drawings for buns for oil tanks of up to 25 cubic metres. BS8007 is often referred to as a design standard for buns. However, the scope of BS8007 explicitly excludes dynamic loads, i.e. those that arise if a tank fails, and the standard also excludes aggressive liquids. However, BS8007 has useful information on concrete grades and rebar specifications. In Ireland, the EPA guidance note on buns should be referred to. Other agencies, such as the HSA, may also refer to this document. This video has attempted to simplify a complex subject. If you require further advice, please feel free to contact us on either of the two phone numbers or send an email.